Now that we know what a discrete probability distribution is and how to figure out whether one is valid or not, we want to be able to find the mean and the standard deviation of those distributions. In spring 2023, for some reason, the standard deviation piece was missing, so make sure you add that in. Now this symbol over here is the symbol for mean. Sometimes students forget because it's been so long. We learned that the first week of class. That was in section 3.1, maybe the second week of class. And then over here is the standard deviation. That's the symbol. That's a sigma. That's a mu. The x just means it's for the x variable. It's, it's a way of labeling it, right? So don't, don't get worried about the x. The x doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to find these with technology, especially the standard deviation. We're also going to find the mean by hand. So primarily because it's not very difficult to find by hand, and you'll be able to do either one, whichever way you're more comfortable with. But not for standard deviation. There's no point in doing that by hand. All right, so before I go any further, wait a second. These symbols, we've seen these, right? So this is mu, this is sigma looks like an O with a tail on it. They're Greek letters, right? Mu and Sigma. And it's the reason we use them is they're the population symbols. Now, why can we use a probability distribution, or why can we use population symbols for a probability distribution? That's because a probability distribution represents all possible futures. So it is a population. A probability distribution is the future. Right? When you look at a probability distribution, you're looking at the future possible outcomes from this experiment, from this random experiment. So it represents all futures. Future outcomes of the experiment. And since it's all the future, right, all the pos possible future outcomes, it's a population. which is unusual for us. I mean, if you think back to chapter three, we were working way more with samples than we were with populations because we could get our hands on a sample. We can call up people and get sample data. But in probability, everything's a population because everything's assumed to be the entire possibilities of the future. Now, the mean is very important. One of the reasons we need to know how to do this is that the mean is so special it has a whole field of study devoted to itself. Um, it's called the expected value. So when you look at the mean, the mean is the expected value. Right? They are tied together. I will use the words interchangeably a lot. Um, so the mean is the expected outcome from a probability distribution, from a probability experiment. And if we did more and more experiments, the mean of those results would get closer and closer to that expected value of the random variable. So it's very important to know that the mean and the expected value are one and the same. And we'll get more into that in a later pages. And then I just have some instructions there that we're about to follow because we have our NBA finals data set right here and we want to compute the mean and the standard deviation and then we're going to interpret those values. Okay, so let me show how to do this in StatCrunch and I actually um, uploaded this data set, I believe, right here. Okay, so and I'll make this publicly available to you. So when we want to find the mean of this, it's the number of games is right here and the probability to go with that is right here. So you can go to Stat, Calculators, and it's at the very bottom. It's the Custom Calculator. Your values are your number of games, and your weights are your probability. And then you say Compute, and there they are. And the mean is right here. It's 5.777. It says mean right there. <laughs> and the standard deviation is right there. And if you're wondering, this is actually figuring out probabilities for us. So if I wanted the probabilities of, say, greater than six games, which we just did on the previous page, there it is, 0.645. Right? So it, it has a nice little feature. Or if I wanted to do the probability of five games, just because I was curious, I could change this to five and say compute, and there it is. It's that bar, which was 0.237. So it's not strictly required, but it's kind of fun to play with. But the mean is right there, and the standard deviation is right there. And you can tell the heights of the bars are the heights of those probabilities. All right. So 
let's go back and put those values in. So 5.777 and 9 point, or 0.954. I'm actually going to write them down before I switch back, otherwise I will forget. Okay. Let's write instructions for ourselves. So the stat crunch path, it's up above, but you know it doesn't hurt to write it again in your own handwriting. We went to stat calculators custom and then it asked us a question it said the values in which were our data points so the values in were the X and the weights were the probabilities All right, now let's interpret that mean and standard deviation in the context of the situation. Okay, so if we select a random MBA finals, so if we select a random NBA final series, We expect the series, I mean, and we could say from 1947 to 2022, right? We expect, right, there's that word expect, uh, because the mean is expectation. That's what we, we use the word expect back in chapter three for this, right? So that interpretation still is the same as it was back in chapter three. So we expect the series to last 5.777 games, give or take 0.954 games. And if that's looking familiar, uh, that's because we've seen that before. Um, we actually did this exact same interpretation. So we had expect that word in there. Over here we have the mean and then we have give or take and the standard deviation. We learned that back in section 3.2. This is the mu, the mean, this is the sigma. And x is just number of games, right? So um, this value right here is your x and this is your probability of x, right? So those are your values. Now I'm actually going to show how to do this with a TI calculator, but if you're not using a TI calculator, you can skip ahead to the next video. All right, TI folks. So we're going to go to stat, edit, and we're going to enter the values from our table. So four, five, six, and seven. And we have to enter those probabilities. So I'm going to move this over so I can see the probabilities because I don't remember them off the top of my head. All right, it's 0 0.118, 0.237. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, uh, that's the problem with the calculator, 0 0.395, 0 0.25. And then you go to stat, calculate, one variable, and you have to tell it to use the frequency list. That's the key to this section, right? It's, it's like section 3.3. So you have to tell it list one has the data, list two has the frequencies. And you go down to calculate and press enter. There's the 5.777 at the top, and there's the sigma, which is 0.9535. So you can see the values it's coming up with match what we got with StatCrunch. Right? It's the same numbers, but just calculated differently. Well, calculated with a calculator instead.